Welcome into Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Ali and Stevie alongside me. Um, I'll start with you, Ali, because we know what Stevie's answer will be to this. Best overall player, <laughs> Steven Gerrard or Andrea Pirlo? Mm. Steven Gerrard and more variety and more flexibility to his game uh, in terms of what he can give you offensively, more athleticism, also what he can give you defensively. Uh, a guy who truly cover box to box and uh, much more of a presence in the attack than Andrea Pirlo was. Andrea Pirlo was a, an incredible talent with the ball at his feet, but I, I just have to say uh, there was a point in time in the career of Andrea Pirlo where while he was a great distributor of the ball, he didn't give you much more than that. Magical with his vision, magical with his passing, but not a complete player like Steven Gerrard was. So pretty much like Steven Gerrard at LA Galaxy offered very little, Ali. <laughs> well, Andrea Pirlo didn't offer much for NYCFC uh, either. <laughs> it's very true. At least, uh, Steven, at least Steven Gerrard yeah, ran Steven around Gerard, yeah. a little Ali, bit with the LA Ali, Galaxy. Pirlo didn't even move. Ali. Ali, don't listen to him. He's just trying to be a wee smarty pants again. After retirement from the professional game, did you keep playing at all? Sunday league or whatever, do any pros just completely hang up their boots and never play again? Stevie, you played a little bit, and you were a goalkeeper for a while. I did. I did. I played with the uh, over 40s uh, for a period of time. Played uh, outside and inside. Uh, but I'd have to say I got... Ooh. I got fed up with it because <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? Not. <laughs> I, I got fed does up with outside it. Outside and inside matter. Because. <laughs> All right, I will tell you now. I did. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you Ali, what about you? Did you play inside, outside, as usual? upstairs, downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> Look. I want to hear Stevie's story. Go ahead, Stevie. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stevie. You know, it, it's amazing, Ali. It just shows how stupid he actually is when he thinks it's funny when you say inside and outside. There are, there are two professional leagues that you can play. One is inside and one is outside, Daniel. So I don't know what you're sniggering at. It just shows your ignorance <laughs> right, can I, can of the professional game. Get on with the story. Yeah, I got I got fed up because listen, when you when you're playing with pros, we all understand that there's contact involved. The problem is when you play with a lot of amateur guys, if there's any contact so whatsoever, all of a sudden it's this big ego thing with why did you touch me and all the rest of it. And then they all start then they all start well, they don't start fine. They all start with the handbags, try to give it the big hard the hard man and the posture and, and and all the other nonsense and then they're complaining so that's why I stopped playing I, I, I couldn't hack amateurs they can't take any contact whatsoever um, so I just I, I had enough of it Ali yeah much like Stevie I I'd like to go out and play have a little fun have a little kick around and what have you but I, I could not do it with people that thought they were playing the World Cup final when we were actually just kind of get a sweat on. Uh, and then part of what made it most frustrating is that, uh, as Steve is referring to, to amateurs, is that they have difficulties completing a five-yard pass, and yet there are a lot of people out there that have those difficulties, and yet they try to do back heels and all sorts of fancy things. And, and it is so frustrating to think that people believe they're better players because they want to do fancy stuff. And when the truth is, if you can do the, you cannot do the basic stuff consistently, then why even bother with the back heels? And, and so, well, that, that would get me worked up. But what would get me even more worked up is that when you actually go and tell them, hey, look, you don't have to do that. It's like, it's almost as if you're taking the life away from them. It's like, this is, I gotta try things, I gotta do things. I'm like, no, that doesn't make you a better player. And in the end, it's just too much stress. And so I went back to just playing with my kids team and, and just training with the U17s and the U19s, a little bit perhaps less competitive in terms of you're not playing for something specific, but 
a little bit more quality and so that five yard passes are completed with more consistency and I don't go crazy and I don't have people trying to win the World Cup in a Thursday night over 40 league. Hey Dan, you know the other thing as well with, with Stevie. A, a lot of amateurs, they, they, they can't control their body. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as professionals, right. You know, you we we would do doggy runs, which means that you sprint to a point, then you stop quickly, you go back another way, and then your your movement and you're you're in full control of what you can do. I played in goals for my daughter's co-ed team once. She asked me to come and play, and it'd be good for us to to play together, and then we could have a drink afterwards. I thought that's a great idea. So I went in goals. About 20 minutes after we started, a ball was rolling to me. I went down on my knee to pick it up and some idiot comes steaming right into me, hit me right in the ribs with her knee and I had to go to the hospital. <laughs> I had to leave my car, I got taken to the hospital, I couldn't breathe, I got carried off the field. Honest to goodness, that was it, <laughs> that was the last. You, you know the car dealership blow up <laughs> dolls, uh, Dan? You know the ones that just kind of blow up in the wind kind of like that, yes. kind of crazy? That's what a lot of players that play in this sort of over 40 leagues are like. They're just completely out of control when they're running and they don't quite right. know when to stop and when a tackle is a tackle and when it's just time to pull up. They just kind of keep going until they hit a wall and that's about it. <laughs> well, until they hit me, right in the ribs. Yeah, well, well that's a wall right there. <laughs> it's a soft wall, but it's a wall <laughs> nonetheless. That's a proper wall. <laughs> Stevie, is Sado Mane, sorry, is Sado Mane better than John Barnes was? Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Uh, I'd have to say no. I'd have to say no. You know, I think, I think Sadio Mane's lucky the way Liverpool play that you know, his job is to, to pretty much stay on, on one half of the field uh, generally. Yes, he, he does come back now and again and help out, but generally he's told to stay in the attacking half of the field and go at defenders. Now, Banzi, with a ball at his feet dribbling at his best, was better than Manny. Uh, unfortunately for Banzi, he had to do a lot more work in the game because one of his responsibilities was to defend, get back behind the ball, and be in, be in a defensive posture. So, listen, as, as great as Sadio Mane is, John Barnes is one of the best players I've ever played with. And I've played with a lot of good players at Liverpool, obviously. But Barnes, he was absolutely fantastic. He, unplayable sometimes. In fact, most of the time, unplayable. And, until, unfortunately, he, uh, he tore his Achilles and, and that curtailed him a little. But before that, absolute. Lights out, as Mariner would say. He was my favourite player growing up, Stevie. Interesting fact for you. Oh, well, thank you, Dan. Right. <laughs> That's all right, no problem. Uh, who had more success in MLS? Get ready for this one. Mm. It's for you, Stevie. Get prepared. Alejandro Moreno mm. or Stephen Nichol? Ooh. Did you send that one? <laughs> no, I didn't send it in. It's not me. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you well, you did it the other day when we were talking about MLS. They haven't said if it's indoor clever. or outdoor. Oh, did you win the final? <laughs> <laughs> did you win the final? <laughs> <laughs> well, have you I mean, Ali, Ali, how many times you win MLS? Twice? Three. Three times, Stevie. Well, there you go. So, Ali, more successful than you. I don't think, I don't think, uh, I think it's very unprofessional that people working on the show should be able to put questions in to try and mock one of the fellow professionals. Completely unprofessional, but in your case, Thomas, not a surprise. You have done more sniggering today than you've done in the last five years. <laughs> and you're lucky, you're you lucky I'm sat me, in here, it's no this use. Is the, this is a good thing. <laughs> I, I wouldn't oh. punch it. I wouldn't eat punch it. Oh man! <laughs> I like ah, this question. Right. Fifteen uh, mile an hour wind would blow you done. Who was more successful, 
Who was more successful, Moreno or Nickel? I was. Stevie was great, but I was more successful. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could say something different, Stevie, what? but... <laughs> little pat on the head there, Stevie. Little, little pat on the head. I, I can't lie, Stevie. I can't lie. <laughs> I like this question. Who is better? Keep this question's coming. Who is better, James Rodriguez or Philip Coutinho? <sighs> Steven. Ooh. Do you know what? That's a tester because no question both have got fantastic ability and at times produce something from nothing but both kind of fall into the category of lacking consistency i, I think it, i find it very difficult to, to separate them they've, they've both done fantastic things but both in some ways have disappointed I, i'm finding it difficult to separate them no question both have got incredible ability, but unfortunately, neither of the two of them can can seemingly put it together consistently. I'll separate them then. I'm, I'm going to say James Rodriguez is better simply because of what we have seen with him and Colombia. The club uh, performance hasn't been all that impressive lately, neither has Coutinho's, but with Colombia, James Rodriguez continues to play at a very high level. Oh, an England question for you now, Stevie. You love an England question. Considering the strength and depth <laughs> England have up front, what would your front three be? Oof. Well, we have to play your pal, Kane. Did I ever, did I ever, did yeah, I ever tell you, Ali, that Dan thought that Harry Kane was a <laughs> one-season wonder a few years ago? Anyway, I'm not sure whether I told you, but anyway. Harry Kane would have to start. Ali, did you ever hear the time that Stevie didn't think Salah would make it into the starting 11 of Liverpool? <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> oh, I'm, what sorry, about the sorry, one about Daniel Sturridge? So Kane in the middle. Daniel Sturridge oh, was a good one, too. I've lost, I've lost connection here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think right. the, came I think the, the difference between the two statements. Oh, never mind. The difference between the two statements uh, is pretty clear. <laughs> Salah hadn't even played a game yet. Salah had just signed. So, Smarty Pants <laughs> Thomas again. We had Coutinho, Mane, and and um, <laughs> Bobby Firmino. And so, yeah, a ball hadn't even been kicked. And I did say that you know what? It's not a hundred percent. The Salah is going to start. So not a ball had been kicked. Harry Kane, on the other hand, has scored a thousand goals, <laughs> has started the season again playing well, and Mr. Dan Thomas went, I think he's a one season wonder. So there's a there's quite a bit of difference I did. between the I did. two. I did statements. I admit it, Stevie. I, I own Smarty it. Smarty pants. I own it. Good. So who's the who's the front so three of it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Harry Kane. <laughs> Harry Kane. Harry Kane. <laughs> Raheem Sterling. Jaden Sancho. Yeah, his, you've said that. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Uh, last question, Ali. And that's... Is Craig as loud and as and annoying on the golf course as he is on ESPN? No. <laughs> no. Craig is a wonderful young man when he's out there on the golf course, enjoying himself, talking to Ball everybody, steady. the center of attention. He talks to other people playing in the other holes. He brings people in to play into our group. <laughs> I mean, he is gregarious. It is fantastic to have around. Plus, he gives you a tip every once in a while. Hey, you might want to try to do this. Open up your body like that. Open up the club face. Set yourself up like this. He loves giving <laughs> advice. The man in the golf course is nowhere near what he is on the show and certainly what he is in the studio. And the golf course, Craig, is fun to be around. The other Craig, eh, not yep. so much. He does, he pulls the mask off. As soon as he drives into the car park and gets out of the car, he does that. <laughs> Tears that mask off and there's this other guy there. <laughs> <laughs> A happy guy. I'm a bit uh, you. 
Do you know what? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you, Thomas. Maybe it's you that irritates them. That could Why? be the problem. Well, um, <laughs> well, because you're, you're an irritant. Uh, that is it then. Uh, Stevie, I know you've got... You're like, what I know you've got a lot of jobs to be doing around the house. I'll make sure I'll speak. <laughs> <laughs> It's like your leg. Oh, That's your leg you had for ages. Dan, remember I know, that. Uh, Ellen has got a lot of jobs for you to do. <laughs> what remember did you what say I to said me? to you earlier. <laughs> it's amazing how the less you do, the less you want to do. Don't forget that. That'll take yep. you through your day. Thank you very much, David. That's much appreciated. Cheers, Ali. <laughs> Uh, ESPN FC will be back on David. your screens uh, tomorrow. David? I believe Danny Higginbottom will be with us. <laughs> David Brent. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.